Hello, Smart Leapers! Welcome to a new video. Today, we'll introduce you to a name that many of you might never have heard about, but one that elusively remains one of history's greatest. We speak of Mansa Musa. Musa, the first of Mali, or Mansa Musa, was emperor of the West African Kingdom of Mali from 1312 to 1337. During his reign, he not only tripled the size of his empire, but amassed a fortune so huge he single-handedly turned West Africa into the commercial and cultural envy of its time. Smart leapers, we doubt the world will ever know another Mansa Musa and believe that it is important to pass on this knowledge of Mansa Musa not only as motivation for you, but also to help debunk some unfortunate stereotypes about Africa as a continent that remained poor and uncivilized throughout its long history. We hope that as you learn about the man Mansa Musa and his reign, you might take some time to appreciate the vastness and complexity of the African continent and its diverse and rich history. Mansa is actually a title meaning Sultan. Mansa Musa rose to power after he was appointed a deputy by his grandfather, King Abu Bakr Keita of Mali. It is believed that King Keita went out on an expedition to explore the Atlantic Ocean and never made it back to Mali. In the king's absence, Mansa Musa took over the kingdom and his legendary exploits began a new epoch in Malian civilization. We have attempted to create a credible story of the richest human the world has ever known. We know that Mansa Musa's story is part legend and part historical facts, and we will do our best to present you 10 things you probably don't know about him. We present the stories as told by historians and leave you smart leapers to come to your own conclusions. All right, here we go. Here are 10 things you probably didn't know about Mansa Musa. Number one, Mansa Musa might be the richest man who ever lived. Mansa Musa was king of Mali, a country that was rich in natural resources, particularly salt and gold. From an early age, Musa mastered the art of trade, and as a ruler of his country, he was able to leverage that business acumen to accumulate wealth that remained unmatched to this day. It is estimated that Mansa Musa's wealth would be the equivalent of $400 billion today. To put this figure into perspective, the founder and CEO of Amazon, Jeff Bezos, has around $135 billion and Bill Gates comes right behind him with a fortune of around $100 billion. Bill Gates is worth roughly a quarter of what Mansa Musa was worth. Now imagine four times the wealth of Bill Gates. It is believed the only other person thought to have come close to matching Musa's wealth is Jakob Fugger, a German merchant who lived in the late 15th and early 16th centuries. Number two, he actively supported education in Mali. At Smart Leap, we like to debunk myths. One such myth has to do with education in Africa. Mansa Musa recognized the importance of education and actively developed world-famous institutions of learning in Mali during his reign. At a time when Europe was immersed in famine and devastating warfare, students were flocking to Mali from Europe and the Middle East in order to study at the University of San Kuri, one of the world's first universities. The University of San Kuri was founded in the 10th century, but after Musa came to power, he had an especially significant role in helping the university thrive by channeling into it part of the empire's newfound fortune. The university, already a world-renowned center of Islamic scholarship, continued to flourish and expand as Musa provided with infusion of cash and resources. The University of San Kuri became the beacon of Islamic teachings throughout the known world. But it was not only religious instruction that the University of San Kuri was known for. Learned jurists, astronomers, mathematicians, and experts in various fields were hired to teach at the university as well. You might not know this, but the University of San Kuri is still up and running to this very day. It houses what was once one of the world's largest libraries, perhaps the largest since the Library of Alexandria. Incredibly, this library once held somewhere between 700,000 and 1 million manuscripts. 
the mother load of African history. Number three, he was a legend in medieval Europe. News of Mansa Musa's massive wealth first began making its way into Europe following his pilgrimage to Mecca. As he passed through Alexandria on his way to Mecca, Italian merchants from Venice were taken aback by Musa's sheer wealth of gold and unprecedented generosity. They quickly relayed their stories back to the court and aristocratic houses of Europe. Such tales were enough to carve the legend of the insanely rich African king in the European mind, which culminated in his depiction in the Catalan Atlas of 1375, issued decades after his death. If you don't know, the Catalan Atlas was the single most important map in Europe during medieval times. It was Mansa Musa who literally put Mali on the map. In the atlas, Musa was depicted as the gold-laden emperor that had resonated with the Europeans, drawn wearing a crown and holding a scepter in one hand and an ingot in another, all of which are made of gold. Part of the inscription in the atlas reads, This black lord is called Musa Mali, lord of the black people of Guinea, so abundant in the gold which is found in his country that he is the richest and most noble king in all the land. Smart leapers, that's just impressive. Number four, he caused gold inflation in Cairo during his visit there. As Musa passed through Cairo with his entourage, he gave generously to the poor and acquired souvenirs by giving out gold. The reason Cairo received an especially sizable share of his giveaways was that he was invited to meet Al-Malik Al-Nasir, the Sultan of Egypt at the time. At first, Musa proudly refused to visit with the Sultan of Egypt. You see, visitors had to pay respect by kissing the ground and the Sultan's hand. Musa being Musa, was clearly not about to kiss the ground or some fellow's ring in a subservient capacity. In the end, however, diplomacy prevailed and he decided to visit with the Sultan. It is said that during that visit, every holder of royal office received a significant amount of gold as a gift. Smart leapers, the man essentially made it rain gold in Cairo. Regular citizens got gold, officials got gold, royals got gold, no doubt this caused the price of gold to plummet. The price of gold in Cairo did not recover from that inflation for several years after Musa's visit. Number five, his pilgrimage to Mecca might be the largest in history. For a man who was the richest in history, who lived such a lavish lifestyle, it's no surprise that when he attended to his religious obligations, he did it in the same extravagant manner as his legendary travels. Okay, so here's what happened. Mansa Musa, being a devout Muslim, decided, 1324, to embark on this incredible pilgrimage to Mecca. In Islam, this is called the Hajj. It is a ritual that every able-bodied Muslim is obliged to perform. Back to Musa. The trip from Mali to Mecca, modern-day Saudi Arabia, was 400 miles. Back then, you not only had to have the physical strength to make such an artist's journey, you also had to have immense resources. In short, only the most devout of Muslims made this pilgrimage. Of course, because we are talking about Mansa Musa, we know this journey had to be made in style. The sources differ on the size of his procession, but according to some, it is estimated that he took with him around 60,000 men. There were around 12,000 slave women, all dressed in brocade and Persian silk, and carrying around four pounds of gold bars each. The caravan also included around 100 camels, each carrying 50 to 300 pounds of gold dust. The gold was mostly given out to the poor as Musa passed towns and cities during his journey. Some of it was exchanged for souvenirs from the locals as he journeyed across the land. It is said Mansa Musa even commanded that mosques and houses be built along his route. What's perhaps truly impressive is that the Kingdom of Mali operated perfectly well for two years despite Musa's absence and even ran a successful military campaign during that time. Number 6. Musa's Wealth Attracted Foreign Conquest As we mentioned earlier, Europe was a continent in turmoil and war during the reign of Mansa Musa. But aside from illness, 
famine and war, Europe was lacking in silver and gold. As stories of Mansa Musa's enormous wealth made their way across the Mediterranean, Europeans learned of this thriving West African empire of Mali. Well, we know that's an invitation for some in Europe to come looking for some of that gold and silver. The Portuguese were the first to rush into Mali. In the 15th century, the century that followed Musa's death, the Portuguese began sending naval raids, and although the Malian army was able to hold up pretty well at first, the Portuguese were able to colonize several important trading centers around Mali's coast. This ended up cutting the country off from the rest of the world, and the Portuguese were able to conquer it in 1444. After a few centuries of Portuguese conquest, Mali would later become a French colony, and although it gained its independence from France in 1960, Mali economy and culture still has strong ties to France. In fact, French remains the country's official language. If we could give Mansa Musa's free advice, we would say, move silently and don't announce your riches. Number 7. He built the great Jingrebird Mosque in Timbuktu. When Musa came back from his pilgrimage to Mecca, he had new aspirations for his kingdom to become a central player in the Islamic world. As a part of his efforts to remake Mali, and especially the city of Timbuktu, into a cultural hub to complement its status as a commercial powerhouse, Musa commanded the construction of one of Africa's largest mosques, the Jingrebur Mosque. The construction began in 1327 and was reportedly completed by 1330. It is said the architect who designed the mosque was awarded 200 kilograms of gold by Musa for his efforts. This mosque, entirely built out of mud brick and wood, still stands to this day after almost 700 years after its construction and is a part of the University of Timbuktu. In 1988, it was listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Number 8. He ruled over more than 400,000 miles of territory. During his 25 years in power, Musa sent campaigns in every direction in order to conquer neighboring lands. His empire eventually covered parts of modern-day Senegal, Mauritania, Chad, Nigeria, Niger, Burkina Faso, Guinea, Ivory Coast, Sierra Leone, Liberia, and Gambia. Despite these massive conquests, Musa's campaigns were actually known to use only minimal force. When force was needed, though, Musa's armies were always able to prevail. He ended up ruling over 24 major cities in Africa, and in his 25 years as Emperor of Mali, he is said to have never lost a battle. Number 9. Musa was a champion of religious freedom. At a time when people would almost automatically be forced to adopt the religion of their conquerors, Musa never tried to force Islam on the African regions that he came to rule. Despite his emphasis on education, and especially religious education that was mainly focused on Islam, the African tribes that lived in the conquered regions were allowed to keep their traditional religions, which believed in nature and ancestral worship. Of course, such religious traditions were in deep conflict with the teaching of Islam. However, part of Musa's insistence on making Mali an urban center was to make it a haven of religious tolerance in the region. So while the church in Europe was actively engaged in the Crusades, here was an African king with immense wealth and power who practiced tolerance over people and territory he conquered. There goes more myths about Africa. Number 10. His life ended in mysterious circumstances. There is very little known of how the legend of Mansa Musa ended. We know that he rose to power in 1312, and his reign lasted 25 years until 1337. But what we're unsure about is whether his rule ended because of his death or his resignation. We also don't know how or why he died. It is said Musa's great fortune remained in his family for two generations and was gradually squandered away. It's almost as if Mansa Musa's legend was meant to remain one of great wealth and long-lived achievements, whose lasting legacy we can still see in Mali today. Tell us, smart leapers, do you believe the stories told about Mansa Musa? Or do you think that his story is nothing more than an exotic ancient legend? Answer in the comments, and you're always welcome to start a discussion about any of the topics we talk about in this channel, because discussions are what spark smart leaps.
We'll be back with a new video soon. If you like this one, don't forget to press the like button and share the video, as well as subscribe to the channel and activate the notifications button so you're always updated whenever we post something new. There are countless more topics to come and you don't want to miss them. Until then, have an amazing day, Smart Leapers!